so it'll actually have like a stir in it that'll move and we're going to um, keep the heat consistent and how we're going to do that is by using like an oil bath and I learned that from making moonshine. So, <laughs> you know? You're, you're a true artist. Yeah, it's like, I have yes. you Wait, you've made moonshine? Oh yeah, I got it still. I make moonshine, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. isn't that illegal? Yeah, that yeah, was good. <laughs> and I'm getting good at it. But, uh, but the Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Take a picture of brother. Hey, All right. <laughs> hey, this is the sculptor right here. This is the main <laughs> guy right here. How you doing? Ivan Eiler here with Hammer and Ann Custom Cycles. Today we're going to be building a treadle powered air graver. And we're going to do that using this old Singer sewing machine base. I've got the top here that I've made out of cedar. I've already got the top side finished on that. So now we just have to figure out how we're going to mount our air compressor and get it to run to the treadle. So here we just want to make sure we're remarking out that we're actually getting a straight line down to the top of our table. And that way our belts line up between our pulley and our compressor head. We also want to make sure that we're thinking about our line, that we're going to get a good straight shot down to connect to that bottom pulley. So here's the compressor head that we're going to be using, and it's, uh, it's off of an old 25 gallon air compressor that we had that the motor burned out on, but the compressor pump's still good, so we'll go with this. <laughs> now here I'm just cutting off the piece that we're going to use for making the tip of our air graver. I'm just using a piece of uh, C12L14 hex stock. Now we're going to drill the center of this out at an eighth of an inch. The reason for doing that is the bit that's going into the tip is going to be an eighth inch piece of hardened steel, or high speed steel. Now I'm just going to center punch this for the set screw that's going to hold that bit in place. Go to tap this piece. We're going to be doing this with an 8 by 32 thread per inch tap. So you want to make sure that you're keeping that straight in both directions. Otherwise it'll be easy to snap this bit off if you bind. And then we have to cut the barrel for the main body of our air graver. Now we want to make sure that we don't have this too long so that it's easy to handle. It feels good in the hand, but for now we're going to cut a little bit long, trim it later. And here we have a 
ball bearing that just fits inside our tube. We got a nice snug fit, which is what you want, because we're going to be using the air to suck that ball bearing back and forth, and that's going to act as our hammer. So we're also going to want a spring to help cushion that ball bearing, that hammer, as it's running back and forth. And here I'm just cleaning up the barrel, the body, giving a little shape to it. So here I have the tip made, and you can see how deep it goes in. And that's going to be our anvil that our ball bearing hammer is going to hit against. We're going to need to put a hole in this so it can breathe. So here we're just taking the back side of that tip and we're turning it down until our barrel fits nice and snug. Now that we know how deep that tip goes, we can figure out where we need to put our air hole. Because we're going to need an air hole to allow that ball bearing to run back and forth. Otherwise it'll create a vacuum. And here we're marking and drilling for our set screw with our tip in place. Now one thing that I noticed was as we were doing this, we had a bit of a problem with the uh, speed that the air compressor is running at. So we're going to make a secondary pulley to speed that up. I'm making this out of nylon and what we're doing here is I'm turning down one section so that we have one large pulley connected to one small pulley and we're going to use this as a uh, as a speed increaser a gear reduction so to speak Now the other problem is it seems that the head that we had for the other air compressor took too much torque. So here we're going to be using this instead. And this is a small air compressor for an airbrush. And I take in and remove the valves and filled in the holes to allow this to suck and blow instead of just pumping air. So now when the piston moves up and down it will push and pull air in and out. For the palm piece for our air graver, we're going to be using a piece of purple heart. This is a naturally occurring purple wood and it's really beautiful. I think it'll end up making a really nice piece for this. This will be the piece that fits into our palm. And this cap now, I've made this, modified it so it's got a little barb coming off the side so that we can hook our hose up to it, get the air to come in and out, and that should fit in the palm pretty nicely. Now 
as far as our belt goes for this part, we're not going to be using a leather belt like we did on the other section. We're actually going to be using a, a rubberized belt that's typically used for a watchmaker's lathe or a jeweler's lathe. And how we'll do that is by heating up this piece of brass, this little piece of sheet brass, and we'll press either end of the rubber belting to it, allowing them to melt and then hold them together while they set. And so there we have it. We've got our air graver made, got our handle in place, got our hose attached to our air compressor. And I've taken and put a rack on here to hold all the different gravers and graver bits and things that I use. And we've got our gear reduction in place and got it working real good. Now we're ready to start engraving. That pitting on the end of that, that's what's giving you that hammering. Like typically what you'd be doing if you were an engraving, like, like back in the day, you'd be doing engraving what they call chasing. And so you would have you would have your chisel and your hammer. And so what chasing is, basically metal chasing, you're taking and you're you know, getting your bit against your metal, and you're taking your hammer and you're just, you're just kind of tapping it along, and you're peeling up the metal, okay. and you're cutting into it. And you can do that, but it'll take a minute. But you see, just peeling that metal up yeah. and you're engraving into it. Well, with this, what I can do is basically do that, but a lot easier and a lot more controlled because as I'm going, you know, I can manipulate this with my hand. And I don't have to worry about using the hammer. I can just hold this, you know, and just push with my palm and follow my bit along what I'm doing. See, so I can just come in and cut in with it.